My name is Espen Hallon, and I'm a wildlife photographer. This means that often I spend hours at a time on my own in nature, getting to know my subject and waiting for that perfect moment to make my image. In 2022, I joined Ton Orbjorn Truls at Dovrefjell in Norway to photograph the musk ox. So I'm really excited to be going back in 2023 to see my friends again and photograph these majestic animals. The musk ox in Norway live in the mountains of Dovrefjell, and even though they're perfectly adapted to this arctic environment, facing the elements through the darkest and coldest months of the year is never easy. This is a story of friendship, an adventure through Norway, harsh environments, and survival. My adventure starts on a train. I'm on the Bergensbahn, which goes between Bergen and Oslo, where it stops at the highest railroad stations in Norway. Traveling by train is by far my favorite way of getting around. The cafe has just what I need for a trip like this. Cinnamon buns, coffee and hot dogs. I sit down and enjoy the views, which are hard to beat on the Bagans Barn in winter. It gives me time to read and write, plan what's ahead and do some research. I read up on some issues in my favourite magazines, the Journal of Wildlife Photography and Wildlife Photographic. I look over some inspirational images that I've seen in this type of environment that I'm going to. Unfortunately, Trulz can't make it this year, but luckily Gunnar Dressler has stepped in to take his place. In 12 hours, I'll arrive at Dovre, where I'll meet up with Ton, Odbjorn and Gunnar. I'll catch the next train from Oslo to Dumbos, Ton and Odbjorn will be driving from Stavanger and Gunnar has the shortest journey and is driving from his home in Trondheim and has kindly offered to pick me up at the train station in Dumbos. It's after midnight when we finally meet up. <laughs> Together again, it doesn't take long until we pick up right where we left off a year ago and Gunnar fits right in. We get a recap from Ton and Odbjorn when they were stopped by the police, not even left Stavanger, apparently driving too slow and it flagged their attention. They pulled him over and immediately made him do a drug test. Does this look like a junkie to you? <laughs> Ton has brought me the Mzuko 150-400 from Stavanger Futu for me to use on the trip. So I'm absolutely ecstatic and might not be able to sleep at all tonight. Orvion and Ton has done a really good job doing all the shopping. They got almost everything right except for one thing. It's instant coffee. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, my, I, I, I had a sneaking suspicion that uh -huh. they didn't have a, a coffee uh, tractor. <laughs> we sit up for a while, chatting and catching up. On day one, we follow a false musk ox. Gunnar has to turn back. Ton breaks his spoon. And just as we're about to give up, something magical happens. We almost have no light left. I know. We're staying at Führhögli mountain cabins on Dovrefjall. It's only a kilometre from the main road, the E6, and it's not far to go see the musk ox. I spend the morning resorting my bag to make room for the 150 to 400. I'm using the Mindshift Elite 45 litre camera bag. I find it ideal for trips like this. I can take it with me on the plane, and it's got lots of room for additional clothes, which I'll need for the cold mountain winters of Norway. Four vloggers on a trip. It's all but impossible to film anything without filming somebody else filming something else. It is day one, we're about to head out. And action! Action! Cut! Oh, this is five minutes into the day, it's gonna be a long day. I don't know how Tron is driving so far because I never have been sitting in a car with him. Um, have you heard of Martin? Ah! <laughs> Bye camera. So we just stopped at the parking lot over here, did a scan and 
Ton spotted a musk ox within like three seconds. I think he's getting a little bit of experience with this. Seeing a musk ox from the road though, is a very small first step. We have to drive on quite far to an area called Grunbakken before we can park and cross into the national park. We try to survey what's ahead of us and agree on a direction that will take us towards where we saw the musk ox from the road, while avoiding the worst terrain. We quickly realize that our first day is going to be hard. We have a long walk ahead of us and there are no trails here since last snowfall. Like geese on migration, we alternate who walks at the front to do the hard work. Even with snowshoes, it's tough going. We've seen one, what we think is one musk ox, probably from a couple of kilometers away when we first saw it. We're heading that direction. It is a long trek, and especially even through binoculars, we can't be 100% sure that it is a musk ox. The closer we get, the more we start to doubt that this might not be an animal. It turns out that the musk ox was in fact a big rock. Gunnar faces some issues with his hip and decides to turn back, not wanting to do any serious injuries on his first day. We stop for a late lunch. It's only an hour left before the sun goes down, but we have to eat before we keep going. We always come prepared with a first aid kit. He clearly doesn't have, know how to eat with spoons. <laughs> Or be honest, just spotted two of them straight ahead, just below us. We were almost about to give up. Let's get my camera out. I think we just need to get on with it. Let's do it. We almost have no light left. There are now one in a boat. Yeah. Look at this. It's incredible. So we are making our way kind of a half circle around them. We don't want to scare them away. Finally get to try out the 150, 400. Even though we're almost out of daylight, we can't believe our luck. We were about to go back empty handed. As we're photographing the musk ox in this incredible landscape as the sun is going down for the day, I'm reminded how nice it is to share this experience with friends. We've supported each other in the tough walk through the snow today, Odbjorn saved Ton from starvation, and I've shown myself to be someone you can count on, or rather, use as a prop when you don't want to carry your heavy lens anymore. The animals spend most of the time feeding, which means they don't often lift their heads but we try and make the best out of it. I'm loving using the 150 to 400. With a built-in teleconverter of 1.25, it gives me extra reach and up to a thousand millimeter in full frame equivalent. I try for a variety of compositions. Some of the animals small in the frame, some closer up, while we try to move into a position so that we can get the sky, which is popping pink and orange behind the musk ox. Such a lucky ending to our first day. It was a shame that Gunnar missed the encounter, but as he keeps annoyingly reminding us, he only lives three hours away. He can come back at any time. Trying to follow our tracks back. It turns out we were following Musk's track for a while. <laughs> I think we're getting a bit tired. What a fantastic day. Back at the cabin, we get the fire going and stretch out some sore legs. Ton presents the menu. Food always tastes better when you've been outside all day and we enjoy an excellent curry. On day two, Gunnar gets overly friendly, 
temperature plummets to minus 21 and a half. Odbjorn solves the mystery of why his pants won't stay up. up and I get to see my first ever muskox calf. Little did we know what lay ahead for this young muskox. <laughs> no lurking here. That's that. Okay, go away. Hello. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> this. <laughs> Is that how my camera looks? And we stop at the lay-by to look for the muskox we saw last evening. Even though we can't spot the animals, that doesn't mean they're not there. But the almost disappointment of yesterday is still fresh in our minds, so we decide to play it safe and go for the animals on Hergsnita, which we can actually see through binoculars from the road. It is freezing today. Car said minus 21 and a half. So I just want to hurry and walk up to where the sun is hitting the hill and warm up. It's no fun starting the day cold. Ah, that feels good. I've got two muskox up top here. <laughs> I've accidentally taken my wife's pants and they keep popping up because they have no belts. We have lunch close to the top of Hergsnita and wait for the light to get a bit better. I don't stop, I just drink from my sock. Beer yes. from a boot. I was, I think, Water four years sock. old when my grandfather gave me his first sock to drink from. <laughs> it's the <Yeah>. same one. <laughs> it's, and I still have it until this day. Once I finish lunch, I make sure to get into my warm clothes, as it can quickly get chilly when we sit still. I have thick salopette trousers to put on, and I exchange my Paramo jacket for a down Balgans jacket. I also put some heat packs in the pockets of my Tinden Valorant gloves. At this point, I had only seen two adults sitting below us as we walked up. But as I peek across the edge, I also get a view of the young calf. Such a privilege to see this young animal in this winter environment. However, we're not sure if he's doing so well. He seems to be scratching his head against a boulder, and we see no signs of his mother. As muskox calves are born between April and June, this young one isn't even a year old. We're told by one of the guides that the calf has been abandoned by his mother for unknown reasons and he's been hanging around with three adult males for some time. Without his mom, he'll likely not live through the winter. We spend the remaining hours of the day watching the muskox. We get some great light at sunset, but the muskox are done feeding for the day and spend most of the time sleeping. This is a big part of wildlife photography. You can put in a lot of effort, wait patiently for hours, and still not get the image. If it was easy, it wouldn't be as rewarding. It's time to walk back. It's always a long trek back to the car, but I've come to really enjoy the walks. They start when the sky is filled with colorful clouds and the landscape looks dramatic. Mostly we walk in silence, and all I hear is the shuffling of our snowshoes. It's meditative, and I take in all that happened today. Twilight comes and goes, the stars come out. 
even without a photo to show for it. We had an extraordinary day on the hill, and it was such an amazing experience to see these muskox and the young calf. Though I'm left with a bit of sadness, knowing that the young muskox likely won't make it through his first year. It's on our third and final day that we get rewarded by some of the best photography of muskox I've ever had. On day three, we decided to go straight back up to Hergsnita to see the calf and the three adults again on our last day. It's even colder today. The car measured minus 22 degrees Celsius and the wind chill makes it even colder. Besides our four muskox nearby, we notice a herd of eight muskox walking along the cliff edge high above us. I'm absolutely captivated by these animals. Though it's amazing to get close to wild animals for photography, I find that this herd walking along the ridge above us tells more of a story of the lives of the muskox and the habitat they live in. The wind starts to pick up. It gets significantly colder. But with the wind blowing the hair of the muskox, the photography just gets better and better. And we're rewarded with 10 minutes of high activity by the muskox. Even though the photography was incredible, I can't help but feel for the young calf. I'm comforted by the fact that even though he was abandoned by his mother, he found friendship in these three adults to face the harsh winter with. At this point, we knew that the little one most likely wouldn't make it through the next months of winter. However, we didn't know that the four of us were the last people to see him alive. He was found dead the following day. Wildlife photography can be a lonely occupation. I spend a lot of my time on my own in nature. This little calf who faced his first and only winter with companions reminds me to cherish these moments in nature when I get to share the experience with my friends. Thanks for watching.